Drogba indirici zana Snyder! Snyder gol! Merhaba and welcome to episode 16 of the Lions Den, a Galatasaray podcast done by the community for the community. From all around the universe, I'm your host Samet and everyone, a big applause to my fellow podcast member that actually did show up today. From New York, America, we have Emre and yeah, Yasin. <laughs> Only <laughs> have American why, voice. Why are you laughing, bro? I forgot your name for a second. <laughs> oof, 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 oof. Okay, wow, okay. man. No, I was like, is his name Yasin? I, I, yeah. Emre, Emre is, this, is this a joke to me not coming often? Is that See, what you're getting you, at? If with you this came right now? more often, he'd probably remember your name. You know what I mean? <laughs> oh, no, <right>. honestly. <laughs> I, I wasn't even trying to bully you. I'm just happy you're back. <laughs> I'm happy to be here, bro. Nice, man. Nice. I mean, I wasn't there last week. I was uh, in Berlin. Mm -hmm. So the guys did it on their own. It was a super shit podcast. You can tell that to Sally. Oof. You know, props to him to even approaching you to do it. Okay, so there's that. Nah, do do have to thank Chief Editor Emre for his efforts. So yes, that too. You're very welcome. That's the most painful part of it, actually. People don't know, but the amount of time you have to put into editing is actually a lot. Yeah. Yeah, and I thanked you guys. I mean, I mean, uh, I, I mean. We got to thank you because you do it the most, you know, you do it more often than any of us. Well, any of us meaning me and you because no one else has done it yet. True. I mean, it's not my podcast. It's our podcast. So Right, right. So, yeah. Anyway, yeah. With that said, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to all our beautiful listeners. How are you boys doing? You want to go first, Yasin? Chilling, man. Chilling. I was talking to you before the weather's finally opening up. My birthday's around the corner. Uh, what more can I ask for at this point? I'm tired of all the rain, nice. the clouds recently. And I think it's the same over there too for you, right? Finally nice and sunny. Yep. It's finally just the weather I like, you know, between that 65 to 70 degrees. What is that in Celsius? Because uh, you guys don't do Fahrenheit there, right? 21 degrees. It's nice, finally. It's been nice uh, for me as well. Uh, like I said, I was in Berlin. How was it? Uh, amazing, man. It's such a very cool, hip place to be. We had uh, lots of good food. It's basically little Istanbul, they say. Have you visited uh, Podolsky's uh, kebab shop or no? I don't think I have, actually, no. Everyone says it's good. Yeah, I have had that before, like in Köln. But uh, in Berlin, I didn't come across it. He used to open up a franchise here bro because we don't have that many good mm, yeah. kebabs is it true that the uh donut is better in germany than it is in turkey i hear that Did a you lot try any over there yeah um yeah that is actually true i mean all the meats is basically produced in germany the donut meat and that's how we get it but aside from that there are differences like in the sauces and the additional stuff they put in and I like them both. It's like, I don't know how they make dinner kebab in, in uh, New York, but they put a lot of sauce and dressing on it in Holland. And in Turkey, it's just bare bone meat. And I like both of them. It's not like the one is better than the other. Yeah. That's how I feel. Yasin, do you feel like the kebabs here, or the donut, or the way they make it, a lot of the places is very like overdone. Like it's very like overcooked <laughs> and it feels very spongy to chew on. Yeah, I just don't like it overall. I would not recommend it. Yeah, that's why I go with Adana. Spicy or non-spicy? I mean, for me, it doesn't matter. But I do add a little bit. Yeah, spice is nice, but sometimes when you ask for like spicy food, like spicy la majun or spicy Adana, the spices that you use is sometimes overpowering compared to the food. Like You actually want to taste the Adana, right? right. Sometimes the way mm -hmm. that they put the spices on, you don't taste that Adana anymore. You, you taste the spices that they put on. And it's not worth it then, you know? Can I can definitely say that Arda Turan had a lot of Adana in Turkey. 
<laughs> oh, should, we, should we just get right into uh, Arda Turan then at this point? Because there is yeah. a lot to talk about with him. Let, let, that, let that be the bridge. Uh, let me just do a recap of all the news. So quick recap of the recent news. Well, first of all, Luis Campos is leaving. He made an announcement that Turkish football is not at the elite level it should be. And he is sad that he could not lift it up to that level either. That was his latest statement, and uh, that's it for him. We had Arda Turan getting an award, and he had some interesting statements during that award, of which one was, if a footballer has 10 physical attributes that they need to have, I might only have three, and the other seven I don't. But due to my willpower and hard work, I did become a footballer. We had Muslera do an interview with Gese TV. We had a Gese TV YouTube clip of the U12 team showing a very interesting fair play action and how they got rewarded. We had an interview from Chikildao. We had another interview from Markau. And then we had Patrick van Aanholt speaking to Fotomaj. And also Momo speaking to either Fanatic or photo much and finally uh, I think that was a bit odd Galatasaray tweeted 17th of May the picture of the UEFA Cup but they cropped out Hakan Shukur so in a nutshell these are the main things I wrote down might have missed a few like I remember now Dursun Özbek will actually join Metin Öztürk's management He's going to join forces, yeah? He's going to be second in charge, like second president. Yeah. So uh, which one should we tackle first? Let's just start from the beginning, right? Where you mentioned Arda Turan receiving a reward for being, what was it? Player, most loved player of 2022? Most loved player and also the player that people should strive to be like. Like, um, yeah. As role, an role model. model. Role model, yeah. What is wrong with this country? <laughs> <laughs> Who finds him a good role model? I, they want people to go up in hospitals with guns and threaten people? It's basically a call-up to do that, oh, yeah. Bro, what? what? Oh, I don't get it. You want to get an award? You want to be a role model? Yes. I, uh, go shoot some people I, yeah, up. I should do that, right? Political, man. I would love to you know, slander Arda Turan. There's a lot to slander him. But I, I guess we have to be honest here, too. Arda is... In some people's eyes, especially younger players, at least from what I hear, right? Arda has been at many different teams over the years, and the, his teammates they all kind of speak well about Arda. You know, I guess that's the part of the side that we don't see, right? We see the stuff in the news, we see him come on the field with a belly, yeah. and we don't like I don't this. Know. But I mean, you know, we had like six, seven players have interviews, and they all ask like, "Who's the best, hardworking, etc." Arda wasn't mentioned once. Mm. Yeah, Mark I was mentioned plenty of times, for oh, example, yeah. you know, Nelson as well, which isn't a surprise, but Arda, hmm, hardest working to get himself in jail. Yeah, my take on this, there's two sides to the story uh, of him getting an award for being a role model and the most loved football player. On one side, he has given Galatasaray so much He's always acted as a Galatasaray fan as well. We know his story, how he came up from being a ball boy to going to Barcelona. And we know also a lot of the things he's done and also the things he's still doing, like going to all the youngster games, watching them and guiding them as well. So that's one side of the ideal Arda. But on the other side, we also know Arda from going to the hospital with a gun, hitting up on other people's wives, arguing on national TV live on NTV Spore with Fatih Terim about the national team. You remember the whole who gets paid what fiasco? Yeah. Yep. So I think there's... You missed another. Which one? Yeah, he, he assaulted a news newspaper uh, guy on the plane. Oh, yeah. <laughs> remember that one? <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> there's so many. 
There's so many, you kind of glance over some of them, don't you? Yeah. So I thank him as a Galatasaray fan and for all he's done, for sure. But at a certain point, you say, we're all humans. Everyone is allowed to make mistakes. No one is perfect, right? That's a bit my take. I cannot really take one side on this. Sure, he's done terrible things, but he's also given Galatasaray so much that I can't really blame a lot of things. It's ironic that he got, yeah, the role model prize, of course. But he said in the interview as well, I thank you all for seeing the good side of me and not all the bad things that we've done. The actual article and what it says and the statements he makes are really from the heart, as he always has been. It just shows football players are also humans. Okay, you make a mistake once, I mean, max twice, but how many mistakes has he made? And don't get me wrong, I might sound like the biggest hater of Barda, but in reality, I was so happy when he made his way to Barcelona. I was over the moon. I watched every game of his. I followed Mm -hmm. him. When he got his hat trick in the Champions League, I was so happy for him. But like ever since then, he just started going down and down. His actions during the national team, it was just, it made me not fond of him. You know how they say Soltubin in Turkish? So that's, that's mm. exactly what happened. Like, I don't know. Maybe I want to see Arda outside of football trying to make a name for himself, trying to get back in every, everybody's goodwill, you know? I think that's what this is an attempt to do. Uh, the first thing I said was it was political, and I, that's what it is. He knows a lot of people. He has a lot of good connections. Everybody that's friends with him outside of what we see in public, right? Whether that's, you know, the Neff guy, whether that's all the board members, all the people that work as staff at Galatasaray, whether that's Fatih Terim, all of these people have very strong relationships with Arda Turan because the guy, he's a chill guy. He's funny. He knows how to talk. He's done a lot, been to many different places. Even the, one of the teams he played for was Bashak Shir, which is full of people with connections, right? They like him. And I think, you know, everybody realizes, you can, this is something that we see too, his time in football as a player is coming to an end. And the only future of with football is Galatasaray in terms of making a big name for himself right what he's trying to do what his connections are trying to help him do is end on a good note that I think that's all that's trying to go on right now you know Arda has made mistakes Arda has come on the field with a belly Arda has provided little to zero help for our football team over the last two years while making decent money these are all negative things but we're trying to cover that up so once Arda retires it's a new it's a new start for him and here's one more distraction you know here's a, an award for being somebody to look up to uh as ridiculous as it is uh, you can see this on twitter you can see it on reddit everywhere in in our conversations i think it's a political distraction so Arthur can restart his career going forward because his football and career ends in you know a month in less than a month so this is this is how i see it at least also to add that I don't know, maybe it's a crackpot theory, but Nidespor, our pilot team's coach, actually left. And people are wondering, is this something for Arda Turan that has been done? Is he going there since Hakan Balta is doing the U19? Could that be a start for him with his coaching career? So there's some rumors going on there for Arda. Mm-hmm. I don't know about Nida. They're like not even mm. in the league below us. There's two leagues below us now, correct? Because they got relegated. Yeah. I don't know how that will work. Yeah, you can argue a lot if that was a smart decision to do or not. Basically, buying a relegation team. They made a lot of bad decisions this year, so that's like my <laughs> least concerned one. Yeah, we know you don't like Burakan was. <laughs> yep, him and Ishitan Gun. Oh, yeah. On my side, I was happy with Luis Campos being a consultant. And now that he's actually announced that he hasn't done anything and he's left... Uh, also, Brock Elmas actually announced that he hasn't given any money to Luis Campos. Um, well, firstly, when he announced he, we would work with Luis Campos, I was very happy. But then I heard he was going to be a consultant. I was like, okay, HBC Elmas will done. Because consultants only come in, they report and give advice. And then still, 
internally, Galatasaray has to make the decision ultimately. That's what I'm saying. This consultant is just different regarding mm-hmm. him just being in the club and working. But guys, it's Campos. Like it's a good start. You know, I'd I know he has start connections. somewhere. Yeah. He has connections, and you know, a, a consultant. What does a consultant do? They're an external party that's not related to you. They don't work in your company, right? So that's always a good aspect too. Consultants have a lot of experience from the outside. So not only are they working for you as a consultant, they're probably working for XYZ clubs as well. They have lots of experience everywhere. That's what this club needs. This club needs at least somewhere to start. And I think a consultant in theory was exciting, especially with a name like Campos. He can come in and say, okay, Y'all realize it or not, you're making mistakes here, you're making mistakes there. This is how I advise you based on the club that I advise over there. This league is similar to yours in this way. Your your team, your squad is set up poorly compared to this club. And I've seen this club get out of it from this way. Like, this is what a consultant would do. At least I assume. Unfortunately, in many ways, there was poor communication this year. And one of that is us having no real idea what this guy is, right? I remember right. when he was appointed consultant, it was like, oh, is he our sporting director? Is consultant just a fancy name or is that a different role? How often is he here? How much is he getting paid? Like, there's a lot of questions. And, you know, as fans, we have no, the we right did. to ask these questions. We talked about it, but like, you know, uh, not yeah, to, We not- talked about it and we said already, okay, we got a trio, a triangle with... Luis Campos, yep. Sensibile, yep. and Torrent. Mm-hmm. It's more a professional setup, what we see nowadays in modern football. But the problem is, I mean, I've seen many consultants come in and go. When you have a consultant that comes and tries to do change management, you need the whole company, the whole organization backing it and actually partaking in the change. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no Turk is going to listen to some foreigner telling him what to do. Uh, and that's kind of a bit what happened, especially with Burak Elmas losing, losing all of his backings when he fired Fatih Terim. We discussed this and we said, yeah, it wouldn't take long uh, before he's gone. And uh, I think we have the worst case scenario even now with uh, Furat Tevejola doing uh, the delay with the, with the court appeal he did. It's uh, terrible times to be in for Galatasaray. I think, um, I don't know any worse situations. I think the bomb season was even better than this. Probably. At least we had some consistency. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, you're right in one way, Yasin. It's good to have a consultant, but you know me. I'm a, I'm a pessimist when it comes to people's intentions. I, for me, the biggest concern was, was Campos going to do what's good for Galatasaray or what's good for Campos? You know what I mean? That's, that was my biggest concern. Yeah, yeah. Valid, valid concern. Um, mm. I agree with you. And he did take some cuts from the deals he made for the low knees that we had in the winter. Yeah. Apparently. I How think much of it's true? Is there's, no, see, there's no cop, right? So we can't, yeah. we don't know. I mean, I believe that. that. That's also not something that is difficult to doubt either, whether that's Turkish managers or... Foreign manager. It's normal. Every manager. Everybody gets a cut. Business. Everybody gets a cut to something, somehow, some way. It's... Halan's manager got like 20 million or something? I think I think more. I think more. But even yeah. more, yeah. Yeah, it's crazy. But uh, it's what they do to get that cut is my worry. You know, back in the day, mm-hmm. we saw a lot of very poor players come in and out of this team. And you question why. Yes, we've had excuses like the foreigner limit. Yes, we've had excuses like, oh, they're free or they're cheap. But like the end product was so bad. It's like, did these guys just come in because they all have the same manager? Which is something we've seen, you know, in the recent <laughs> years with that one manager, I forget his name now, who is Davila. like, yeah, Davila, like this guy's getting insane cuts. And for him, it, it began to feel like, okay, is he actually bringing these players because they're good? And are we agreeing because they're good? Or is it because... We have some sort of agreement in process where he's asking for a lower cut and he's making money off volume, right? There was a lot of questions about the intention of what was going on. So there's a lot of questions. I mean, I don't blame you for being pessimistic, but to uh, provide a contrary agreement on our uh, side of looking at things, I'm kind of excited for what is to come. Yes, it's negative. Yes, nobody knows what's going on. 
who's president, who's second president, who's going to run, who's going to win. But we're at a very low. And generally, I think, Emery, you mentioned this last week on the podcast, we do a good job as a club bouncing back from these situations. Mm, yeah, yeah. And that's what I look forward to next season. You know, there's a lot of negative stuff that's been going on and our future might not be so clear. Mm -hmm. But I do have hope. As a Goss High fan, some people call me overly optimistic. But for this club, I'm always optimistic no matter the situation. And that's why I'm looking forward mm -hmm. to next season. Yeah, man. For me, the thing is, I was willing to wait two years, three years. Yep. As long as we had a good management and a decent idea. And, and honestly, Burak Elmas, his idea was, it's good. I don't believe he had bad intentions for Galatasaray at all. He just incapable, incompetent, and he couldn't do it. Because what he tried to do is a very hard thing to do as well in Turkey. You don't mess around with the Turkish hierarchy. You got the patron, and that's who you ask the things. And he tried to professionalize that with professional people in the football world. But as we all see it now, it didn't really work out, unfortunately. Now we have to start from zero again. Yep. And I hope we don't go back to old you times. You really have to play to the Turkish political climate. It's just impossible not to. When mm -hmm. you look into it, it's just filled with like political agenda. Yeah, in the, indeed. Moving on from that, we had quite some interviews. I don't know. It's like Galatasaray said, hey, guys, you know what? Go and uh, do interviews with everyone except for the Lions then. You know, <laughs> I just want to make a quick comment. You said everybody, right? So I'm looking at these names, right? We have Arda Turan. We have Muslera, mm -hmm. Chikaldao, mm -hmm. Markal, PVA, Momo. A lot mm -hmm. of these players might be out the door in a couple of months. They definitely, I don't think PVA will be, though. I think PVA and Arda are the only ones staying in this list. I think Marcao is gone. I think Momo is gone. <sighs> no. I think Ar Arda Turan is hopefully gone. He should be gone. <laughs> he yeah. said he's retiring himself, no? Yeah, I mean, I sure hope so, right? I think Chikal Dao is gone, too. It's Morotan also. Maybe, maybe not. Maybe gone on as a loanee, but... Jesus. In interesting little trend I found. I don't know. Maybe I'm looking into it too much. <laughs> I don't know. It's uh, For me, it's a big question mark. Obviously, we have to sell players this season. It's the only logical way because we have nothing next year. And we had Europe this season, so that increased their price a bit. So it's a good time to sell. But I don't know. It's just a bingo at, the point, at this point. But yeah, one of Muslera's interview points was, again, the most lists. As Galatasaray TV always does. And I know who you're going to bring up. <laughs> um, Muslera actually said, who's the most aggressive? He said Melo. Who's the most funny? He gave a ton of names. Colin Kazim Richards, Marcao, Albert Riera, Sabri, Engin Maitar, Hakan Balta. As for who's the most calm? He said Elmander, Selchuk, Ushfalusi. The most serious, he said, Omar El Abdullahi. And the most shy, he said, Ozan Kapak. And there's four more points, he said. The talkative persons are PVA Nelson Snyder. <laughs> the most hungry, Ismail Jipe. I think someone else mentioned this before. Nelson, I think. Hardworking, he gave a ton of names. Ujfalusi, Salchuk, Burak, Omar, Markao, Nelson, Omar Bayram. <laughs> Uh, Kerem and Emre Kalunc. And then you have who, who is the most on time. Babel, Omar, and PVA. It's, it's the Dutch attitude, man. I knew you were going to say And uh, finally, ending on the, the, the laziest asshole. Of course. <laughs> Halil. <laughs> Dervisholo? Yeah. Dervisholo. Yeah, such a lazy Yeah, it's term. unanimously like agreed upon all the players that he's the most like lazy fucking person in that squad. It's actually mm -hmm. insane. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't like him in general. But he's Dutch. Come on. He's like you, mm. a Dutch Turk. <laughs> yeah, the Dutch attitude, like bro. What happened? No. <laughs> he's street scum, bro. <laughs> oof, oof, Damn. That's how I see it. Whew. I think for me, the day I started like really disassociating with him was when he was supporting the corona protesters. He did delete that story very fast after. 
but just showed he has two brain cells and uh... <laughs> wait he did that i don't remember yeah that. he did that. I, rem- I remember yeah. that that's wild <laughs> yeah. i guess he is quite lazy and you know uh not to change the subject too much but that reminds me of something that Torrance said after the game he said you know I when I came I didn't want this many players in my squad. I, I forgot the exact number he mentioned, but maybe fifteen twenty. It's definitely way less yeah. than the amount of people we have now. He said I want less people and I want people who actually want to fight and win, who are hungry to work hard. And that you know, that that's what I thought of when you mentioned Holly being lazy. Um mm-hmm. and I, and whether it's with Torn or not, I think we should keep that same attitude going into next season with the way that we make our team. Yeah, that should be the attitude for every team. Having players that are hungry for fighting for you know spots, and I, I would see mm-hmm. why he'd want less players because he barely subs any players as it is. Imagine having like seven players on the bench, I'm trying Never to appease gonna... everybody. Yeah, yeah, that's hard too. In other news, Balkan Kutlo also had an interview, short interview though, that we didn't mention. What did I don't he think say? He's gone though. <laughs> Well, he just, I think he, uh, he was with a trust fund or something like that. And I think they asked him about football. He didn't really want to talk about it, but did <laughs> talk about it. And he said, in the offense, there was nobody better than Galatasaray. Fatih Terim was proving this to everybody. However, due to the bad luck, we weren't able to score more goals. Which is, I fully agree. Yeah. I- in general, you can see with Nelson, with Morutsan, Chikildao. They all have a certain line that they say, especially Chikaldao and Morutsan. They're very fond of Terim, like a baba, they say. And specifically on Morutsan, he said, Fatih Terim would let me play every match more and more. So he would give me more and more minutes. And he did that to alleviate the pressure off me. So I don't have too much pressure. And now I'm still working hard. I'm still training hard, but I'm not getting any minutes. So I have a feeling he's not very happy with Torin. Yeah, I can definitely see that. Mm-hmm. Him and the same for Chico. Also, you're forgetting Budish has also seen less time under Torrent. Yeah, a lot of people were complaining about Terim and youngsters. Yeah, there we have it. They were hoping for someone to come in and, you know, pick these kids up from the ground. As if, you know, they were perishing completely under Terim, which I don't agree. That they were really bad. I, we were bad, but we were bad in the league. And there were many circumstances. We, we've been through all that. But, mm-hmm. again, yeah, I, I didn't see a single thing improve with Torrent. I seen, and then again, you know, he came in at a pretty tough time. He's trying to implement a system with players that probably aren't suited for his system. Which is another I mean, reason. when he came in, there weren't even uh, analyst programs or whatever. <laughs> there, he basically started with nothing. He came at a farmer's club. Yeah. That's what he's... Well, he didn't say that. But well, that's, that's what he's insinuating, what he yeah. I mean... Do you guys think of that a comment? Poor, that's a poor excuse, man. Look at Pistiolis. Do you think he had, like, rooms and rooms of data available for him to go 9-9 nine and nine in the basketball team, which was also not doing great? Like... That's such a poor excuse, man. Although I don't want to compare it to him. It's a different. Basketball. It's a different. All right, all right, let me give you another example. Emre Berizola took Bashak Shir. So I have brought an them to the top too. four. Okay. <laughs> he, he knows that team. He knows the league. It's okay. easier for. I'm, 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 by the way, Tal, Nuri this, 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 Excuses. I have more. Okay. You know what? I'm glad you mentioned these names. What's familiar? What's the same about all these guys is they know those teams. Right, Ismail Kartal knows Fenerbahce. Even if he's not in it recently, he knows Fenerbahce. He's a what fan does that just mean, like though? you and me. What does that mean? He, he know he he's worked with some of those names before, or he he's in connection with people who are talking with those names. When he took that job, he knows how Fenerbahce has been playing for quite some time. He's been analyzing. You think he just watches? That's it. He does his own analysis probably as a coach, any manager who does as a profession, constantly watching these games, making his own assessments. Nuri Shahi, he knows Antalya sport. He played for them. He knows the players. Uh, Emre Berezolo, he knows Bashak Shir. He's been there for God knows how long now before he took that manager role. And the same thing for the other guy at uh, 
Alanya, you know, before, I think he went to Alanya. What was that? Farioli? What was, what was his name? Farioli, yeah. Uh, yeah, I think he had a stint at Alanya where he started off fine. And that's also because he was an assistant to Chadash when Chadash was coach. So there's fami- yeah. there's familiarity involved. And then Volkan Demirel, you know, he I think he I think he's been pretty successful too, but he knows the league. That's his advantage, right? He might not have a lot of experience with uh Karimburg, but he at least knows the Turkish league as a Turkish player and as a Turkish league watcher. These are advantages which none of which uh Torrent had. And Torrent had a lot of, you know, disadvantages coming in. I'm not creating excuses. I just want to, you know, out- outline the differences. When, when people argue against Torrent and they have millions of reasons to do so that I would agree, these are not the ones that I want to hear about because these are actually, in my opinion, fair excuses for Torrent. That he didn't know the, the league. He didn't know the league. He didn't know the team, a large team. Um, but that's not to say that what he's done so far is acceptable, by the way. I, I just, I just want to differentiate those excuses. Um, I mean, if you look at it, he's been here, what, three, four months? It's not a lot. Yeah, it, it's not a lot, but I, you know, um, to counter argue myself, there's a lot of things <laughs> that I, I would have wanted to see from him so far too. I think some of his changes don't make sense. You guys mentioned Budish, right, and the youngster thing. Um, mm-hmm. He actually started off with Budish, I believe. Uh, when he came, mm-hmm. he 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 put, gave more minutes to Emre Kulinch. He gave more minutes to Budish, but something happened, uh, and there's a lot of different rumors. I'm not going to say any of it because I I don't know the credibility of it but apparently there's been some issues with Budish Alper Yilmaz on why he's not playing uh as for Morotan I'm not sure but it doesn't make sense because we all saw him came on uh multiple times and actually made an impact as a winger um but yeah I I can go on and on about Torrent I, I just want to clarify that difference real quick yeah i mean that difference is acceptable to a certain degree but just because you know the league isn't always going to give you an advantage i mean listen this is torrent we're talking about who has had stints under pep guardiola this man has been to the top leagues you know top three leagues how much yep, more yep. analyzation do you need you've analyzed yep. the, t- the most top tier teams on this planet and yet you're complaining about teams in the Turkish league. You know, that's... Honestly, I, I don't blame Torrent at all. The situation he came in... Came like I said, to, it's not ideal. It wasn't ideal. No, I mean... yeah. <laughs> can you have a proper job, a proper life without a house sleeping on the street? Would you be successful in life without your basic needs? He didn't come to a team that was <laughs> incapable of doing anything. We had a transfer season. I mean, just because it went poorly doesn't mean, you know, he didn't have access to I mean, house, how good right? was the transfer season? Well, that's not our fault, any, right? <laughs> anyone, yeah, but that's what I mean. The house and the processes within that house, the kitchen wasn't working. The sink wasn't working. The fridge wasn't cooling. The, the heating wasn't working. Right, that's not. I'm not blaming someone him for that. To, yeah, that's the thing. And I told this before. How can you do your job? I don't think I'm not criticizing. I'm not criticizing him on that aspect. What tilts me is and, and the that, whole. This is not my team. There's no analyzations. Yada yada yada. That is what my my biggest criticism is of him. Then it would be yeah. playing younger players. And to add more fuel to the fire, I don't know if you guys heard him uh, pre-match yesterday. <laughs> He's, 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 he said something about, um, you know, he actually kind of indirectly put blame on players too. You know, I think he was being asked a question like, oh, like, you know, what do you plan to do? What, what's your ambition? How do, you guys, how do you expect the game today to go? How do you expect the season to finish? What are you doing as a coach? You know, what, what are your expectations from what you see today? And he said, you know, as a coach, we can prepare all we want, but... At the end of the day, it's the players that go on the field. Uh, it's the one; they're the ones who need to, you know, shoot, pass, whatever. This is not an exact quote, by the way, but he said something like this, where he put a lot of pressure and also excuse on the players in terms of our results. Mm-hmm. And that's not something I really wanted to hear, if I'm being honest. Uh, as as yeah. as as much Fasi as Fatih Terim got critiqued a lot yes, for those kind yes. of statements. Yes, yes, and that's why I'm being fair. I, I, I don't I didn't like it when Terim said that, and I don't like it now when Torrent is saying that. Um, I think there's definitely a huge issue in Torrent trying to 
build these connections with the players. Uh, I know that's something that he puts a lot of emphasis on, a lot of importance on. That's what he said from the get-go. And as fans, you've kind of seen that side of Torrent. He's very close and friendly. He's a soft-looking guy. He's not aggressive or loud. But it's very clear to me, as a fan from the outside, there's been lots of internal issues. Whether that's between him and the board, between him and some players, some captains, some co-captains, or just locker room leaders, I think there's been issues and unfortunately that makes that that reflects on him you know with the team does bad whatever that's going to make him look bad just like it made Tatum look bad at times i'm not i'm not sure how he's going to be able to return from that one mm. yeah yeah just excited to start the new uh, season and see which board will be chosen as well so i mean is it going to be a fair game if it's Dursun Özbek with what was the guy's name? Timur Adam? Mitin. No, no, but like the, the big businessman uh, uh, of uh, Nef. Uh, Adam uh, Timur? Adam Timur, yep, yep. Adam Timur, yeah. Ne- Nef, Nef has helped a lot, by the way, apparently. Yeah. Lots of sources always talk good about Nef, how they really handed out money when needed. And, um, well, I'm still for the wizard. I hate Yalu Surat, <laughs> Dursun Uzbek, so. Yeah, we're all uh, on the same page there. So I just want to quickly yeah. paraphrase now that we're talking about uh, the presidents. Seems like we have Eshef, which is the wizard, aka the wizard, who wants to work with Cenk. Uh, what's his last name? Cenk Adrian. Bold guy. Cenk. Ad- I think it's Cenk Adrian. Yeah, as a sporting director. Yeah, sportive director. Yeah. He, he was our sportive director under Dursun before. Uh, keep mm-hmm. me honest here, and he apparently prefers to work with a foreign manager which a lot of reporters are saying that is Torrent's best shot. If Eshref gets uh, president, Cenk might want to continue with Torrent, potentially. On the other fence, mm. you know, the news that you mentioned before, now we have Tursun Özbek and Metin Öst- uh, Öztürk, who rumored wants to work with Fatih Terim. That, that changes everything. I don't think it'll happen. You don't think it'll happen? No, bro. I think this is this political climate is just too much. I don't see it happening either. He said, I mean, he said a lot of things about Titerim, but this time he really said, "Yeah, this is my first signature and my last signature." He said things like that before, like I will never come yes. back to Gulf Sarai <laughs> unless I'm president. I mean, yeah, okay. I mean, I so, mean, I mean. but no, I don't That's think it's true. that. I think it's literally like I know people might not agree with me, but like. There was definitely some heat between him and TFFA, and they did really try hard to get him like expunged from Gal Sarai. I really think that that was one of the reasons that really forced Burak El Mas's hand to having released Fatih Tatum early, because I I I don't think he's as dumb as he looks, right? He's he he knows that getting rid of Fatih Tatum is gonna bring a heap of heat and hate towards him, right? Mm. So like. Any normal sane person would wait until the end of the season. Because, like, like, we kind of all call this, right? It's very, very hard to follow Fatih Tatum's steps. Mm-hmm. And especially as a foreign manager, because you're going to be criticized heavily for every point you lose. And, yeah. and that's exactly what happened. So, call me crazy. I, I, think, I think there's, like... Some some like little things going on with Tefefe and Fatih Tatum, and so I don't think he'll be coming back. Listen. But to counter argue yep. that yep. Emre, every president has left with Tatum on bad terms. Every president, I don't remember one that had a good relationship with Tatum in the end. Well, let's let's go back a little bit. Um, Mustafa Jengis, right? What was his uh, main concern about Fatih Tatum? I don't recall. I mean, they started off with a big gesture, big plan, Tatum and Genghis, and right. at the end, uh, may he rest in peace, yeah. he wasn't really happy with Tatum and actually did some bad statements as well as far as Towards I Towards the end of his uh, tenure. Main main issue mm-hmm. that comes to my mind is the whole Arda Turan difference. Uh, Mustafa Genghis didn't want Arda Turan, Fatih Tatum did. Oh, yeah. There was a lot of back and forth on, oh, you know, there were first rumors, oh, Tedim wants him, but Genghis doesn't, there's an argument. And then Genghis spoke up saying, oh, there's no argument, but then this didn't stop there. It went on and on. 
and it became even more apparent that 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 was a clear difference between the two. I believe another thing that uh, Mustafa Cengiz complained about was uh, Tatum saw himself as like the ultimate leader. You know, he's taking too many decisions. He <laughs> wants too many things done his way. But he's the coach and Mustafa Cengiz is the president. There needs right. to be a difference in how they handle things at the club. And I think that bothered Mustafa Cengiz, rightfully so. I would be bothered too. But that was another difference between the two and also, ultimately why they, he didn't want to work with him. I think... The relationship definitely took the hardest hit when we were chasing for the championship against Besiktas, and they decided mm. to fire or release Belhanda because of some statements he ah. made. You, you guys recall that about the pitch? Yep. After uh, that, yes. right? And then we that you guys recall that second half of, half of the season we had to deal with Emre Akbaba. We had no Belhanda, and then we lost the championship by one goal, by one goal. Think if we had Ben Honda, because Ben Honda, he's not the greatest player, but he does come in clutch. And Emre Akbaba, that season, he was piss poor, unfortunately for him. I would have loved to see him do well so that we wouldn't have to rely on Ben Honda, but he was piss poor. I think that's where their relationship went extremely sour towards the end there. I never liked Ben Honda. I mean, I'm not the biggest no fan. No discipline. And then let's go yeah. back a little further. The, the last president he worked with, Unal Aysal. Well, I saw fired him because he, he wanted to manage the national team and Galsara at the same time, but when I saw didn't want him to do that. But he got like like orders, like literally requests from the president at the time, if I'm mistaken, right? So it's kind of hard to just say no to your president when they're requesting you formally to manage the national team on the side. I think no, when I, 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 saw, I, don't buy, I don't buy that though. I mean, you're you're hired. The person paying you money is, you know, you know. I saw God's side. You said there were orders from the president. Did you mean Tefefe? Um, no, from literally Erdogan. No. Oh, was it okay? Then I'm not sure. Then I can't really speak on like that. He was, like yeah, he was like he formally requested then. it. <laughs> yeah, I remember yeah, okay. seeing or hearing something like that, and then okay. Things got sour between them and there. So, and then he fired him. He's like, uh, he's just an Eleman, right? So he starts saying some harsh words after him. So, and then he, yeah, Unal Aysal took himself down. It wasn't Tedem because Unal Aysal was coming off really good seasons. The team had money. Then he went and spent tons and tons of money with Mancini. Not that we did terrible. I think we just, we didn't do as good as we thought we would with all the you know, money we spent. And so at least two of the last presidents, I can see why he ends up in bad terms with them. But then again, he's he's the most egotistic person I've ever seen in Turkey. But, I mean, he <laughs> have that kind of success and yeah, you'll be egotistic too. I've always said this. I just, I just want to add a little bit of food for thought for you guys and the listeners, right? I, we're talking about Tedem and the possibility of him coming back. Do you guys think maybe this is the best time or one of the best times for Tedem to make a comeback. And here's why. Tedem got fired mid-season and this is our greatest legend ever. It, it's, it should be him leaving on a good note, whether that's a championship or his way at the end of the season. Okay, that's number one. The guy that took over him was supposed to do better than him and a lot can argue he didn't. We played more attacking under Tedem. We, had, we were closer to first place. Then mm -hmm. when he left, then we are now, right? So a lot of arguments why Tedem should have stayed. Number three, you have a new president coming in who allegedly wants to work with Tedem. We have a lot of players that could be sold for money. So that means a huge budget. We have Nef guy coming in, not just as a sponsor this time, but as a potential vice president, a second president. And that means he's going to be able to and want to spend even more money, right? There's more incentive. Um, You're so optimistic. Listen, I, I'm, I'm. I love it. Go on. I personally, yeah, that you have Fenerbahce, who is our biggest rival, who's allegedly bringing in a big name, and this is their last shot for Ali Coach to really get fans on his side again. Wouldn't Fatih Tedim love to disrupt Joker that? card? Wouldn't wouldn't he wouldn't he love to be like fuck you guys? I'm back. I'm gonna win the league again. Wouldn't he love that? Mm. Um, 
TFFE president Nihat isn't he leaving? This this uh, there's yeah. elections in June, right or July? Mm-hmm. So hey, you're leaving. I'm coming back, bitch. Kind of thing. Well, he's not the only problem. There's also Servet Yardemir. Oh, of course, of course, of course. But like at the head, it's Nihat, right? So th- there's a lot of reasons for him to come back. And I personally, from my side of things, I don't want him coming back. I respect Tedim a lot, but I'm I'm done. I'm over with. I'm just bored of it. I want to move on. But I would mm-hmm. not be surprised if he comes back. That's what I just want to say because there's a lot of reasons for him to come back. You see, I feel like the cards are kind of lining up for him to come back and I would not be surprised. That's my point. Whoever comes, I'll support them fully because I support the club Galatasaray. My only concern is, like, I'm looking at it from a management perspective, being in the corporate world for a long time as well. The house needs to work. If the house doesn't work, nothing will work for you. So... That's my only concern. With that said, I want to move on to a video unleashed by Galatasaray TV. Okay. So U12 kids had a tournament. And in that tournament, what was it again? Um, I believe they had a tournament. It was 0-0. Uh, the ball went off of a certain player. The ref gave the touch or corner kick to... I believe it was a goal kick or a throw into us, right? He gave the favor to mm-hmm. us, and it was wrong. Our our player, our little youth dude, was like, "Hey, ref, that ball actually came off of me." So fair play. Mm-hmm. The ref was like, "Okay, thank you for your honesty." He gave the play advantage to the other team, and if I remember correctly, that other team from that exact play, because the ball was turned to their favor, they ended up scoring from that same position right after because they had the ball. And we ultimately lost the tournament, I believe, because of that. They scored and we lost. And yeah. And then Galatasaray indeed noticed this fair play action by the team and invited the kids to meet up with the current players at Galatasaray and basically commended for what they did and noted you're not losers. You're actually the winners of the tournament with the actions you've done and i thought the video it showed really the spirit of galatasaray what we stand for and how we should act as a galatasaray fan and that's what really touched me on uh, the video yeah it was nice i liked it uh and it's not new that's what i love about being Mm -hmm. a gala fan you know these things happen all the time uh i believe not that long ago beknas who is now 16 but when he was a little bit younger you know, we were mm-hmm. awarded when he was on the youth team, we were awarded a penalty kick, which he at the time didn't agree with. You know, you're, you mm-hmm. have a penalty here, score, get it on your statistic, right? He's like, no, that I don't think that was a penalty. And he just didn't score. I believe he either kicked it right to the goalie, a soft one, so he can save it, or he kicked it wide. But I remember that was big news at the time. And these are, you know, these things happen continuously. And that's what I love about being a Galatasaray fan. It, you know, yes, we want to be the best. We are the best. We want to win trophies. But sometimes it's more than that. You have to be a good player. You have to be somebody that is respected from your peers, but also your opponents too. That's why I love Musleta so much. Every single goalkeeper in the league loves him. Everybody respects him. Urjan Chakr, Trabzon's goalie, which I respect a lot too. He's like, Musleta is my idol. I, I wish to be just like him. You have Emre Belezol is saying Galatasaray won championships over and over again because of Musleta. Yes, I guess he's talking about him as a goalie, but he just gets his praise. And if we can keep on getting these praises from a youth level all the way to our A team, what more can you ask for as a fan? Yeah. Yeah. And the fact is, I don't know. I don't really follow other teams to know this enough, but this usually happens a lot with Galatasaray, these fair play I actually remember way back when Simi told Janae Chucker that, oh, the ball went off of me during a Bishik Tush game. This was a derby, mind you. Yeah, yeah, a yeah. Derby. Yep. Remember that? Yeah. It went yep. off of him, and he told him, listen, it went off of me. And he told Chucker, and Chucker gave Bishik Tush the, the free kick, I mean, the corner kick. Like, and yeah. the commentator was like, wow, you don't really see this often. He shook and his really hand, don't. too. Huh? He shook his hand right after. Yeah, Tanisha he shook it. Was yep, like, Thank yep, you, he and shook he shook his, his hand, hand with Semikaya. Yeah, man. It's it's not your <laughs> yeah. skill that keeps you at Galatasaray. It's your character. Yep. Mm-hmm. There was also a tweet by Galatasaray which uh, struck upon me a bit weird. 
I mean, it is Turkey, but basically they tweeted it's 17th of May today and show pictures of the UEFA Cup and they basically cropped out <laughs> Hakan Şükür. And I found it weird when I saw it because he had a major impact on that success as well. And basically you're trying to make everyone forget about him. What did you think about it? What do you think about that action that they did? We we always celebrate this every single year uh, with pictures, videos. Here's our trophy. We're the only one to do it. And more interestingly, this is even not the first time I guess we're seeing such behavior Gulfside TV, boring as hell. They don't know what to put on. But sometimes what they put on is old videos from those European days and all our goals. Sometimes they just don't include Hakan Schurker. And today, for the first time, I think, Summit, right? They they just mm -hmm. cropped him out. They said, all right, Hakan Schurker, you're not going to be part of this picture that shows us celebrating this, this trophy. And I don't know if it's a coincidence or maybe the main reason but, it, like, you see Burak Elmas more clearly in the picture. I think it's a coincidence. I think it has more to do with Hakan Shukur. But because they cropped Hakan's part out, he zoomed a little bit more on the trophy, on Terim, and then yeah. Burak Elmas as well. Okay. Uh, yeah, what do you think of that? First off, I absolutely find it absolutely cringe that every year we celebrate this one cup that we win. It's like, <laughs> it, it's, it's gotten to the point where every time I see it, I just, like, glance over the post i can't anymore it's like this is where we are like is this what defines us this one european cup yes it's very important that we want it but jesus christ hey, every hey, year hey. man we also had the super cup oh don't worry they get to that too every year i see jarda's <laughs> face you know yeah. and we double a score in that pen like tamam anladık bro first off I, yeah hakan is a very very like he okay his 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 problems with Erdogan and Feto is, is there, right? But he's not the only one, right? He's not the only one. He, who else was... I mean, Benizol was an uh, apostle of Fetula himself, but you don't see him getting cropped out of any other, you know, uh, videos, pictures. He's still in Turkey doing his own thing, right? I don't know. I think you should leave out politics when it comes to football. Yep. We had a great season back then. We won the cup. We had great football players that put their hearts out. Whatever they do now in the future or whatever relationship they have with whatever group, I don't care. I just see that this guy has given his heart out for Galatasaray and won us a big-ass trophy. And it should be commended for it. Yeah, but... And you cannot make something disappear. This is 2022. If it's online, it's online. It doesn't disappear. Like, it's the stupidest thing. Yeah, I mean, we know. I guess it's more of the fear within Turkey and whoever is playing uh, puppetry behind the curtains that's controlling these kind of things and putting pressure on these kind of things, I guess. You, you see, this is what I'm saying, though. You're saying it should not, like, football should not have any politics in it, but it just does. My friend, our unfortunately. president, Turkey's president, is a member of Fenerbahce's, you know, club. A member. <laughs> what? Yes. Burak Elmas? Oh. No, no. President of <laughs> Turkey, Erdogan. Oh, Nihat. No, uh, no, yeah. not Nihat. No, 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 no. Yes, exactly. The race himself. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, He's yeah, a race, member race. of Fenerbahce. Bro, like I said, I don't care about politics. I don't care Have about it either. Have you seen his shot? Have you seen how he plays football? Man, he's good. <laughs> He's super good. He has a killer right foot, man. I know. Erdogan. Bro. Whoever stopped him from <laughs> should, being a should, footballer, man, we got to find him. We should have him as our striker. <laughs> <laughs> Can't be worse I think than Gomez. More... <laughs> hey, hey, Speaking hey, hey, of hey. Gomez. <laughs> yeah. I, uh, let's move on to the game. We don't yeah. have a lot of time left. Yeah. Uh, Yasin, you want to introduce the game or should I? Uh, sure, I can. Couple of things to keep in mind before I go through the lineup. We're playing Adam Demerspor at home. Uh, it's a second to last game. They are in terrible form, and ours is meh. It's our last home game of the season, and we're playing mm -hmm. against a couple of familiar faces. We have Yunus Akgün, who is our low knee. First time around in Adana, he scored two goals against us, and I was really hoping he would score again today, as long as we win, and he did that exactly. We we face Bed Honda, another familiar name. I'm just asking for it, man. Yeah, we were just talking about it as well. 
Um, and we, we won the game 3-2. Our, our starting lineup was, uh, which I kind of liked a little bit better this time around, Musleta and Net. Our back four was Sacha Bowie, uh, Nelson. Markel made his return from injury and the card. Mm-hmm. Uh, Patrick Van Aholt. Our midfield was Berkan and Pulgar. No Thailand. Uh, mm-hmm. Our wingers were Babel and Kerem. No surprise. Halid Dervisholo played like the number 10 slash cam roll, which was in my favor. I liked it. And then Buffett Gomis up top, which was a controversial decision, uh, according to many. But he kind of said, screw you guys. He scored two goals and we won 3-2. But mm-hmm. that that's that's kind of like a brief, I guess, description before we get into the details of it. The first thing I want to note when we started, Belhanda got called up by the fans. And mm. they had a whole uh, clap. I don't know if they did the Uchle. He, he did. He did do an Uchle. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. So that was nice to see because he didn't have a proper goodbye. At least uh, he had that. Yunus Agren, same. Yep. Yeah, in general, I, it was a very fun match to watch, by the way. Yes, Absolutely. sir. I think it's been a while since we had a good game like this. Uh, enjoyed Yunus Akin, enjoyed Balotelli. Amazing free kick by Balotelli. That was beautiful. And one thing in the game, Arda Turam was not even there, as in, in, the, in the starting 11. And he didn't play at all. What do you guys think, like, isn't that a bit disrespectful, knowing it's our last home game and he's not going to be here next season? Should he at least have gotten some minutes? Yes. To say goodbye? Yeah. I, I don't like Arda Turan, but I think he should have been there for like a little goodbye or something. Uh, we didn't even do that for Faguli either. I mean, I think there were some pictures of him like clapping and all that, but we didn't do anything formal. Mm-hmm. I would love to see us do formal things. And... On the topic, I, I don't want to get too off the... Sh- but like Fatih Terim, when he was coach, we had proper goodbyes. We had proper goodbyes yeah. on our social media, which I'm sure Terim was a part of, but we also had proper goodbyes on the field too. Are the Turan, yeah. it, it, it didn't make sense for him not to get that. And what's interesting is Are the Turan didn't really deserve to play the games before today. <laughs> And he did, even with the belly and all that, right? He played 10, 15 minutes sometimes. And today, yeah. he didn't. And what did Torrance say to this after the game? He's like, oh, I didn't find him physically ready or something like this. Like, come on. Was he physically ready the other game and the one before that? Why not today? So there's a, yeah. <laughs> something fishy going on for sure. Um, I do feel bad, but like when I remember all the negative things about Arda Turan, I don't feel bad. So whatever. Uh, I'm curious what Emre thinks, so. Emre? <laughs> He's gone. Did we lose Emre? <laughs> <laughs> There's something happening at his place. But yeah, uh, Yasin, no, I fully agree. Yeah, in general, I don't know. I think Torrent has given up hope on Arda, so fully. And like I said, if the fridge doesn't work in the house, you can't have proper goodbyes or proper good cold beers to say <laughs> goodbyes with. So. Mm-hmm. That's a hard thing to do. And uh, as you know, a lot of appliances in the house is not working. So I don't blame him too much. <laughs> I love some of the house analogies today. And just trying to make it uh, dummy proof, man. <laughs> <laughs> Did you have any other notes uh, on the game itself? Honestly, I was with Sally at home. I invited the lads uh, to my place. Nice. So we could watch it together. So I didn't really focus much on uh, on taking notes. I mean, um, no, the game yeah. was pretty open ended, right? Aldana came to play. They didn't sit the park. They didn't sit their you know players back, park the bus, and just attack on the counter. No, they came to play. They pressed us high up the pitch at times, and we did the same. So I I enjoyed that game immensely. Finally, one game I could like smile at and say, "Wow, this is actually fun to watch." Because most of our other games have been brutal to watch. It's just brutal. Um, but Yasin, your boy, Berkan, or should I say Jerkan, was awesome, bro. <laughs> he was good. He's all over the place. He plays some really place, good. My man. He's, he yeah, plays yeah. really good uh, passes last game. I was really impressed with him yeah, uh, that game. I, I really was. He got us to, He got us the penalty. Yeah, if he could just work on his shots, I think he would That's be... It. That's it. Yep. The guy. That guy. Yeah. He'd be that guy. Yeah. 
I like the main reason why I liked Bad Khan from the get go was actually not what he's most popular for, and that's running a lot. It's his passing. Like, okay, I, I guess I need to detail that a little bit more. It's not like he has some amazing vision like Schneider, you know, but his passes are hard, direct on the ground. Oh, you see a player on the right side of the pitch with 10 yards of space, laser pass to his feet. If it needs to go over, it goes over, you know, over the defender's head. But he sees those passes. He, he plays the ball out wide. When he gets a ball, he likes to play forward quickly. And that's why I hated him in this number six role next to Thailand or sharing that responsibility. Not only did it throw Thailand off because Thailand played that role by himself last year, it didn't let Berkhan show himself. And I've been asking for this lineup in a similar fashion for quite some time. I wanted to see mm-hmm. Berkhan. I wanted to see a CDM, which we have in Pulgar, who, by the way, is a smart player. And you have Halid, who can play more that number 10 than I think Chikal Dao can. You can mix this a little bit, right? You can play maybe Chikal Dao, Berkhan, and Halid, but then you're risking a little bit because you don't have a proper six that you do in Pulgar. So... Mm-hmm. You know, I think he you, you've been seeing it too since Torrent came. Berkan's playing higher up the field. He's making as those much passes. As, I don't like, as much as I don't like Halil, he did help a lot alleviating the midfield uh, with Berkan and uh, Eric. It mm-hmm. was a good good trio, let's put it that way. Yeah. Other than the Thailand Berkan Chikal Dao trio we always see. Yeah. So it was good for our games, but he still sucks. He still can't finish. He still holds the ball too and much he's still on his lazy. feet. And he's still lazy. That doesn't <laughs> change anything there, yeah. Yeah, yep. we're severely lacking in number 10. Mm-hmm. Severely lacking. One. He does have that creativity that we lack. Yeah. Yep. Otherwise, like Hammer said, it was a pretty fun game. Uh, only negative thing for me was we spent a lot of time crossing through Bubble in the first half. They were pretty Mm -hmm. poor crosses. And I don't think Gomez is the best guy when it comes to jumping and heading balls. Mohamed would be better for that. But overall, Mm -hmm. pretty fun game. Um, I liked all the goals that we saw. Gomez even had one that was canceled, but that was a nice goal too. Um, Yeah. Yeah, that's that's pretty much it for me with this game. I know we're running out of time as well, unfortunately. Yeah. I wanted to mention a special case for Sasha Bowie. I was very happy to see him back. He had a killer game as well. I still strongly believe in him. Me too. I think he's his runs, his attacking movement, his defensive movement. For me, he's just a great player, and uh, with the proper yeah, with the proper duo on the right wing, I think uh, he's gonna have a lot of scoring opportunities uh, coming season as well. I don't know who will be in front of him. Hopefully, we'll see Yunus. Yeah. Even uh, Patrick Van Arnold said uh, on. T- on Instagram, uh, see you next season, bro. I love that. Since, uh, okay. yeah. I yeah. love that. That was great. Sasha was really exactly. good with Feguli in the beginning of the season. Hopefully, he'll be mm-hmm. good with mm. Yunus. Yeah, more passing type of player would be good indeed. That'll be a fun How did you think? duo to watch. Yeah. What did you think of uh, Kerem? First half, second half? Uh, I'm glad you ahead, brought yes. up Kerem. Yeah, I'm glad he brought it up, because if he didn't, I was going to. I saw a lot of criticism for Kidam, even though he did score the goal, missed passes and all that. I'm not a fan of Kidam's passing that much. I think it is poor and it needs to be improved, but it was a little bit worse last game. But something that I didn't think about until I, I read he talked about it was how tired he is this season. He played an insane amount of games. I think he probably played the most out of everybody when you combine national teams as well. And he's just said, I'm Looking tired. 50, 60 or something. Yeah, he's like, I'm tired physically. I'm tired mentally. It is what it is. And that makes sense when you see the passes that he's doing. I mean, the kid's still mm-hmm. making runs. He's still running. Mm-hmm. But like yeah. when you're tired, both physically and mentally, those passes are going to be off. And I'll, I'll write mm-hmm. it as a proper excuse. The kid's been amazing all season. So I'm not in any shoes right now to start criticizing Kedem at with one game left in the season. Bro, that game. I think we should sell him. You want to sell him? Yeah, Oof. to me he's good, sure, uh, but but I find him still very one-dimensional, and I see him at his peak with us. So we should sell him. I compare him with players like Yasin Ustekin, uh, who's also I'm very one-dimensional, stop you right there, no. but did <laughs> score a lot of goals. No. Uh, Pedro Pedro from Barcelona, also very one-dimensional, but did score a lot of goals. Um, who else can we? 
<laughs> I, I think that's fine. It depends what he's working with. This season, mm-hmm. it's not fine to be one dimensional when a lot of your teammates are zero dimensional, right? Like that's, it's that's it's a, it's a problem. It makes it makes yeah. him look good the times that that one dimensional aspect shows, but then the weaknesses are apparent when that one dimensional part of him is being stopped from the defenders. I agree with you. I would love multi dimensional players across the entire field, but hey, he's very good at that one thing he does. He's quick. Exactly. He makes runs. He, he he opens up space for the midfield. He opens up space for the striker. And it, it keeps that defender on their toes, both center backs on mm. their toes. If we can couple Kerem with a multi-dimensional winger like Yunus is, I think Yunus has a much higher ceiling than Kerem. And a, and a proper Cam who is able to provide those passes to Kerem or the other side or keep or be so active that it opens up even more space for Kerem then we can see maybe Kerem even go to another level next season. But when it comes mm-hmm. to the sale, I, I can't really say I'm one on one side or the other because it depends what your options are. All he needs is an, another proper ass whooping to open up another dimension to him. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> listen, some, I, I, don't, I don't want him to go because next year, the, the, the foreign limit is getting worse, man. I, I don't know how yeah. you'd want uh, him. Bro, who knows what will happen next year. I don't They'll trust probably this damn say- league. <laughs> exactly. There's no fucking consistency at all. So uh, we don't know. I, but I was wanting to say as well, like, Emre Akbaba is going to be back and I don't see him fit with Kerem, for example. Also very one-dimensional, very attacking-minded uh, um, attacking <laughs> midfielder. <laughs> but um, yeah, it, it will be interesting when Yunus and Emre are He's back. on fire in Alanya. <laughs> we should just sell him oh, back. Yeah. Honestly. I agree. I agree. Emre, you that is factual. I agree with you. How much did we buy him for? Five. I actually don't remember. Eight, yeah, eight. it was like five and, you know, that, five. and you know what? That was also because of Nef and uh Adam Timur at the time. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, you're not well, gonna get that five mil back, that's for sure. But I think while he has value, sell him because you know what? Emra Akwaba to me is a y- Yusuf Yazija from Wish.com. Literally, both yeah. these guys, <laughs> they, they can shoot. They like playing behind the striker. They like making their own runs in the final third. But they're not system players. They're, they're not. Like, Emre Akpaba is not a number 10. You can't... Halil is no. more of a number 10 than Akpaba mm-hmm. is. Because Akpaba, he's like a second striker. He likes playing on the wing. He runs a lot. He puts pressure. Fine. These are good attributes. Fine. But, like, I don't know. Jack of all trades. Master of none. Pretty yeah, much, like, yeah. It's weird to me, and we're in a situation where we need to build a system. We need to build a team, and I can't imagine doing that with Akbaba as part of the eleven. You can't. It's hard to build around him. Would he be a good bench player? Sure, but I highly doubt he's going to want that role as a bench player when he can play in the starting eleven in ninety percent of the teams also, in the league while scoring goals. You want your number ten to be foreign, man, right? I don't know if you. I don't want. Um, Emir Akbaba is my number Why? 10. Why? Because he doesn't have the do vision. Want- I'd ra- See, the Turkish players, their level are at a certain point, right? They're not going to be you're high. You're saying... I'm saying what? You're saying... You're saying that a Turkish player cannot be a 10? I'm not saying that. I'm saying the level that the current Turkish players are at are not yeah. that high. Look at our national team. Is ha- 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 Hakan Chahono is our best number 10. And he... Oh, I hate him. Okay, there you go then. <laughs> <laughs> so my point stands I'd rather keep everyone yeah, okay. else like defenders or goalie whatever have you Turkish maybe one winger Turkish or two and then have that midfield I think it's completely foreign and yeah. top notch because that's where we lack the hardest this season midfield yeah. I think it's I think it's fair to say we do not have a like in the whole league we don't have a real number 10 like Snyder like Haji like Lincoln, it, it's always been foreigners, has it? Exactly. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. I, I don't know who the best number 10 in the league is right now. I honestly can't think of one. There's a lot of good, smart, deep What's midfielders. What's his face from uh, Trabzon? Bakasetas. Oh, yeah. He's on number 10. He's number 10, number 10 no? no he's a he's, good he's, I think, I think he plays that role, but I don't think he's a true number 10. Hmm. But I'm saying mm-hmm. this season, I think he's been 
really good yeah. for them. Yeah, he he can shoot, he can pass. You know, he does he does have those attributes. Um, but maybe we have too high of standards. Maybe we're looking for that next Schneider when we really can't expect to find yeah. him anytime soon. Agreed. Mm. All right, let's call it a day, boys. Yep. We spoke uh, about all the recent news. We uh, basically free flow. Mm-hmm. Went uh, went on about the interviews. Went about uh, the recent events. Right. And then had a little chat about the game against Adanaspor, our final game at home. So with that said, follow us on Spotify. Follow us on Twitter. Follow us on Instagram. With every small kind message that you guys send we get more motivation to do this further and uh yeah we don't get anything for it aside from being a super fan of galatasaray and doing this for the community so with that said i wish you all a very pleasant evening day and morning